So I've been covering Pixel 4 for the past couple of days here. I'm actually prepping for my full review and some in-depth comparisons. But in the meantime, I thought I would invite somebody on here and ask him about the Pixel 4 XL because he has been a Pixel user for how long now? Uh, four years. And you've had the Pixel 2 XL and now the 3 XL. 3 XL. So you are the perfect person to talk to about this somewhat controversial device. Well, maybe not somewhat. And, and you know, today I want you to, you know, give me your opinion on this phone in comparison to your last gen Pixel device. You know, talk about maybe whether it's worth worth it or not and just your general opinion on the design display camera performance battery maybe even if we can really elaborate on that and etc so but before we continue here i'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video comment if you have any questions suggestions or opinions as the algorithm likes that and will help push my content to more people so without wasting any more time let's see what a real pixel non-fanboy user by the way has to say about pixel 4 and pixel 4 xl so, Liam, tell me about the design of this phone in comparison to your 3XL. Uh, the phone definitely has a similar weight to the phone. Uh, I like the more squared off design, I guess you can say, uh, compared to the 3. The colors on the phone actually contrast really well with the black edge along the white glass back. Um, camera cutout's weird. I'm not necessarily sure I like that, you know, indented, bumped camera on the back. And Do you like the notch better so, or the top forehead thing? I like the notch a little bit better and I know that's going to be a little bit controversial. <laughs> uh, I just feel like the forehead on the phone is more outdated. It's more a few years back in terms of design and everything, especially right. when you look at iPhones and everything like that, what they're doing with the notch and the circle punch out and everything like that. So you actually don't mind the forehead over the big bathtub notches some I definitely, it. I don't mind the forehead. Uh, it could be smaller, but I okay. know Google put new technology in it. So right, so it, we do it, have the face it unlock. It is a like compromise. That. It definitely is a compromise. What do you have to say about the facial unlock? And I'll actually demo it for you here. So I'll quickly unlock the phone here to show you the speed of it. Um, it's quicker than Face ID, I would say. And as we know, it does um, use the radar tech in there. What do you think about the whole um, uh, eyes not required controversy <laughs> here, the unconscious unlock? So it's definitely interesting. I think it's a problem with the phone and I think Google should do something about it. And they are, by the way, they did address that, which is good. Which is nice to see the manufacturer actually address problems with their phone. <laughs> I do think it's kind of scary that that whole issue can occur, uh, even if you just don't know it happening. Um, one thing I do miss, I've never had a phone with Face ID, so I'm not really familiar with it. Right. One thing I do miss on this phone, though, is the fingerprint scanner. Right. And so I really wish they Google incorporated it somehow into, let's say, like the power button, something mm -hmm. like that, because Face ID is nice, but with the fingerprint scanner on the back of this phone, it's already unlocked by the time it's up here because I can unlock it coming up from out of my pocket. But I will tell you, though, I did turn off the automatic unlock, so it is a little bit quicker than you saw here. But yeah, that is a genuine concern. What do you think about the um, build materials like used with the Pixel 4? Does it feel more premium than the 3XL? or It definitely does feel more premium than the 3XL. Uh, one thing I do like is that frosted glass back that yeah. Pixel has been doing for you know the 3 as well. One thing I do like about the difference is that this has like that glossy, uh, glossy glass on it and then the, the smoked glass. And so I think this definitely gives off a more premium vibe. Uh, the sides on the 3XL feel more plasticky, I think, than the 4. Um, the 4 just has more premium feel around the edges when you're holding it in your hand. So next up, like compare the displays. Tell us what you think about just the overall quality, if there's any difference. Obviously, this has a 90 hertz refresh rate, which we can talk about too. So, but in terms of color and just everything, what do you think? Color, I feel like, are fairly similar in the phones. Obviously, you can change it in Android settings to have more vibrant or more natural colors. I do think the quality and the resolution on the 4 seems sharper. I don't know if it is or not. Uh, just by looking at, like, even the Google Chrome icon, uh, the 4 just gives a better appearance to it when you're looking at it face on. Is it, like, more crisp? It's definitely more crisp. I can see the edges better. I can see all the lines better and everything wow. like that. And does it seem bigger or smaller? I mean, it looks like this was shifted down and this is shifted up. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Uh, so the screen, it feels it feels smaller on the 4. Um, I think that comes with the forehead compared to the notch on the 3. But I don't know. They seem similar if you line them up like this. They seem about the same size. Yeah, right, uh, right. But Optical when you're, illusion. <laughs> when you're holding it like this, I feel like the screen, it just feels a little bit smaller with that full bezel Interesting. around the phone. What's your comment on the 90 hertz? 90 hertz, you can definitely see. Um, it's a lot smoother in every aspect. You're not going to get those glitchy kind of tears in the screen. 
and you're that i don't know if you can see but is this a feature that you like really want and would upgrade to if so, you you know if it was like financially sound it's definitely not like a deal breaker uh between the two phones in upgrading but it is very nice to have and it would be something that i come to appreciate especially if i were to use this as a daily driver all right so next up i want you to compare um sound quality because that's a big you know important thing with these phones google is well known for their stereo speakers and you got like a front driver and a bottom driver on there as well right you and you just a you, you, i think you get like a top driver here but also a bottom firing one so it's a little bit different with the pixel 3 but you you be the judge you know you tell us which one you think sounds better all right so here's my three. <laughs> okay. So there is actually quite a difference between the two phones. Okay. Uh, the four definitely has better quality and like Christmas to the sound. You're hearing a lot more of the highs and a lot more of the lows in the music compared to the three, which has good speakers, but it kind of like drowns them all together. They're all kind of drowned out by each other. Um, so there's I, just more clarity, you're saying? So it's definitely more clear, uh, but I do think that the front facing speakers on the three are better just because when you're holding the phone, it's shooting directly at you. Uh, when on the four, you have one like firing towards you and then the other kind of goes like below you. Mm -hmm. so. so the stereo experience is better with the three but the overall sound quality is better on the with the four yeah so next up i want to ask you about battery life how much screen on time do you get with the 3xl with the 3xl uh on days i normally don't charge it before i go to bed which is a bad habit uh, <laughs> but whenever it is fully charged i probably get about seven eight hours all day long really uh but that's mostly because i'm not watching content on my okay phone. i'm okay. just normally scrolling through Instagram so it's like well. light to moderate use yeah it's light to moderate use for sure okay um and i always have my apps closed on and everything like that so you are like good on battery as a person i am good on battery um i don't try to abuse the battery at the moment. right so there have been reports and just people are saying that the pixel 4 has inferior battery life to last year's because it has a 90 hertz panel mm -hmm. i think it might even be higher resolution because you said it's sharper mm -hmm. than the uh pixel 3 would it bother you if you got like i don't know an hour or two less let's just say definitely not uh i don't think that constitutes a major difference between the two phones um it, a phone's a phone you're gonna have to charge it anyways right uh and unless you're buying a phone with like a 5000 milliamp hour battery <laughs> you're gonna charge it every day right right and so there's definitely times in my days where i can plug it in with my fast charger uh for 15 30 minutes and get a good enough charge and it's worth the features you would say that come with pixel stock android the camera which we'll talk about and everything yeah uh it definitely is worth it for the you know the better panel the better refresh rate everything like that it definitely just feels like it's worth the, the switch off. Next up, I want to ask you about camera and you've been using Pixel and you've sworn by, you mm -hmm. think it's a really good, you know, photo machine. So let's just take a quick test here okay. with this. We're also going to do a night mode test or a night sight test here. So let's just do, let's just do portrait mode because that is the staple of, you know, Pixel photo taking. So focus use your Pixel on, 3 first. Focus yeah. in on Chad there. Focus in on Chad. Yep, you have to. Take the photo. And then four same thing focus on chad i see more options for the portrait mode yeah right there is some sliders which, which i is... will go over in my full review in terms of i think it's like exposure and brightness and, and just like the zoom and all that yeah. so, so there that is nice to see four definitely renders the image faster with the background and everything right 855 um, versus 845 then so yeah, I think the blur in the background is much better on the four compared to the three. You're getting sharper edges around the object that you're taking a photo of. You're getting a better focus point on what you actually click to focus and everything like that. Um, and if you just compare the two normal photos, there's less change in the three, I feel like, than in the four with the background. Huh. And the colors do seem to be a bit better. So is image processing the better than and sharper? I do think image processing is better on the 4 compared to the 3. Is it improved enough to justify upgrading, though? So I do think that the upgrade of the phone is worth it, uh, especially for the camera, especially if you're like an Instagram influencer or social media influencer. They use their phone for photos a lot. Everything on the 4 just seems to be better just all around and you know that might constitute a few likes from extra people getting your outreach let's test out the night site real quick here so i'm going to turn these studio amazon uh <laughs> soft boxes if you can even call them studio here so now we're in a low light situation we have some ambient lighting let's take a photo 
Old still, I got shaky hands. <laughs> so it does take quite a bit on the three. Uh, night sight on the four. Same object. Old still. Quicker, slower? It seems to be just a bit quicker. Uh, huh. Not not super quick, but the four is just much sharper on the object that my camera was taking a photo of. And you're still getting a lot of the background details and everything like that, like the floor tiles. And in the three, it's kind of all blurred in the background compared to them. And the shadows look better on the four as well of the object. So Nightside 2.0 is definitely better. It definitely is much better, especially like if you look at Hammond, you can read that clearly. If you were to look at that, oh, and you didn't wow. know what, what it said, you really That is quite that. the... So, yeah, okay. And yeah. that was, I mean, folks, that was... I sound like Ben Shapiro. <laughs> that was the, um, you know, controlled environment. Like, he has the same shakiness in his hands, same lighting, you know? No difference there. That goes to show how much better it is. Wow. Yeah. That is pretty stunning. So next up, let's do a little video tester. And you just told me, like, you don't take videos on your Pixel really ever. Yeah. Is that, like, reflective of, like, most Pixel users, you would say? Like, so, can you speak for that? I feel like it's more reflective of, like, every smartphone user. Uh, obviously, Pixel users and Android users might use the camera a little bit more for video. Um, but, yeah, I think it's pretty much reflective to most people that are going to own the phone. I'll zoom in on Saudi You do what you do. <laughs> zoom out. Nah, Coke glass. All right. I'm going to take it same exact way on the four. So start on Saudi Arabia, <laughs> zoom out, and then over to the cup class. So the zooming out animation is kind of choppy, uh, but the panning is obviously quite nice. You're not getting too much motion blur from it. Um, I can already tell without even looking at the four's video that the colors are better on the four <laughs> for video. Start um, on Saudi Arabia. <laughs> zoom out. And the panning is definitely much better on the 4. Okay. Uh, the choppiness on the zoom out is still a little bit present, but not as present as on the 3. In terms of image quality, how much better is it compared to the 3XL? So I'd say the 3XL is probably like a 7 out of 10, 7.5 out of 10, and I'd say the Pixel is probably 8.5 or a 9 wow. out of 10. Wow. So, so is it a marginal improvement or a major improvement? I would say it's a major improvement, at least for video. Okay. So. so if you are, you know, a Pixel user who is into video, um, that will be an improvement, let's just say. Um, but even you would admit um, that, you know, Pixel, at least in the last couple of years, is not the smartphone to get if you want to take the best smartphone video, right? Yeah. Uh, it is for, in my opinion, for photos. I think it's the best yeah. phone to get. But for video, I would choose other companies. Right. And you, and you knowing your usage case, you know, bought the Pixel knowing that. Yeah. I right? bought the Pixel knowing that I wasn't going to take a lot of videos on it. Uh, I would take photos more. And, and like you said, like, I mean, like most people, like you said, like non-YouTubers, like I'm using my 11 Pro Max to record a video right now. And it's really great. And like, I mean, like if you've seen content, great dynamic range, all that, I mean, it's getting better and better. But like most people are not recording 4K all the time. They might record a video of their kids or like, you know, someone's like soccer game or I don't know, something trivial, like you said, Snapchat. So is it the biggest deal you think that this phone lacks 4K60? I don't think it's that big of a deal at all. Um, <laughs> but for like a $900 device, and of course I'm just playing devil's sure. advocate here, do you think it should be included? I think it should be included. Um, there are cheaper phones out there with 4K60 on them, so it, it would be nice to see two Google step up their game just that little bit. So last up, I want to ask you about everyday performance here between these two devices. We have Snapdragon 855 here, Snapdragon 845, uh, 6 gigabytes of RAM up from 4 Tell me if you notice any difference in just everyday performance beyond the 90 hertz, because as we know, it's just going to be smoother, but you can elaborate on that. I mean, sure. like, it does make a difference. So both Instagram and Instagram on both phones were open prior, so I'm going to open it again. Uh, the 4 seems to open up just a bit quicker. I'm scrolling through, obviously, you can see the 90 hertz. Let's avoid that. So let's <laughs> click on this photo. Swipe. I mean, it seems to be similar. Uh, likes and likes. Is the 90 hertz really enjoyable, you gotta say? The 90 hertz is enjoyable, <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna open up Spotify at both the same times. Loads much quicker on the 4. Uh, everything like that, it just, I don't know, it processes things much quicker on the 4 than it does the 3. See, there is a noticeable like there quickness is, to it there is beyond just the 90 hertz. It. Absolutely, and if I go to, let's say, open up the cameras, so I'm gonna type in camera. So, cameras. The 4 is ready almost instantly compared to the 3, and switching from modes just seems to be... Is it, like, better to the point where you want to upgrade? Like, if you just had, like, 
800 $900 laying around, would you buy this phone? <laughs> if I wasn't a broke college kid, I'd definitely upgrade. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. I would definitely upgrade uh, right away. Just it. Even if it didn't have 90 hertz? I don't know about that. Um, but the 90 hertz the 90 definitely hertz, does make a difference. It is a seller point. I got to say, same point. thing for me when I got the OnePlus 7 Pro. It's just a beautiful thing. And it just makes the user experience so much more like enjoyable. Yeah. So Liam, overall, mm -hmm. um, what are your you know final impressions of the Pixel 4 XL? Uh, my final impressions, especially compared to the 3, better build quality. Uh, the weight's about the same, uh, but it feels much better in hand. The materials just feel better. Um, it feels good in your hand. That forehead notch is better than, you know, the ugly cutout uh, on the 3. Um, it's smoother, it runs better. Everything is just a little bit more precise on the 4 than the 3. Uh, every Some things are marginal, like the display and everything like that, but some things are very noticeable, like in the refresh rate and everything. Uh, and 6 gigs of RAM is much better than the 4. So and then the camera quality, like the you said. The camera quality, obviously, like we saw, was much, much better on the 3 or on the 4 than the 3. Um, and it's super noticeable, especially if you're going to be taking photos. So once again, if you were if you were a Pixel 2 XL user, is it worth upgrading right now? If I were a 2 XL user, I'd ditch that phone right away, get the 4. I did it 2 of 3, and it would only be even better. So I going from the 2 to the 3 was a jump. It was absolutely a jump. Would it be as big of a jump going from the 3 XL to the 4? Not as big of a jump, but still a fairly large jump. And like you said, you would upgrade if you weren't a broke college <laughs> if student. If I wasn't a broke college student and I had $900 laying around for a phone, I would own Is it a disappointment? And I say that not because I'm biased against it. This is what people are saying. Is this phone a disappointment from Google? Google definitely could have done better with this phone. Uh, they could have refined more things, um, but I don't think it's warrant. It doesn't warrant the name disappointment. And what do you have to say to like the haters, like the iPhone fanboys and the Samsung fanboys, the people who just put Google down for some of the decisions they made this year? Give it a give it a chance. Uh, it's a smartphone. It's a flagship smartphone. It's going to perform better than your phone in other ways. It's going to perform worse in other ways than your phone. Give it a shot. Tailor it to what you want. Uh, if you want to do photos, get this over like a Samsung. If you want to do video, go iPhone. It all depends on what you're using the phone for. So great to hear that you have a positive outlook on it, of course, despite the fact that you are a Pixel user, but thankfully, once again, you're not an overtly biased one. So yeah, um, hopefully this video helped you out. Um, I'd really appreciate it once again if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, and subscribe for more content like this. We'll probably have Liam on the channel. Again, we had him on for Pixel 2 XL and now Pixel 4. Anything else Pixel, we'll definitely invite him back here. I hope you enjoyed this video once again. And as always, I'm Noah, the guy behind the camera, and I will catch you all in the next one.